top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. urges the armed forces of the Philippines to continue their efforts to achieve peace, security and stability in the country. Two gang leaders disclosed they were allegedly stabbed by suspended Bucor Chief Director General Gerald Bandag last February 1, 2022 at the New Belibid Prison. The Manila International Airport Authority assures measures to further decongest the airport amid the holiday rush. And Russian President Vladimir Putin prepares a new hypersonic missile that can hit any target on Earth in under 30 minutes. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, the 19th of December, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Thiel. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Harleen Delgado. In the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is the guest of honor of the Armed Forces of the Philippines' 87th anniversary. The president asked the AFP to continue working for peace and stability. Nel Maribojo reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. asked the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP to continue exerting efforts to achieve peace and security and sustain economic prosperity, stressing security and stability remain his administration's priority. My marching guidance has always remained constant. We commit to the cause of peace. The security and stability of the country remains the priority. BBBM said his government remains committed to the AFP modernization and will partner with the military towards achieving the vision of a strong, credible, and world-class armed forces that is a source of national pride. He also acknowledged the contribution of the AFP in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, fighting insurgency, and helping in disaster response. In recent years, our country has been experiencing extreme weather events that at times have crippled cities, provinces, the entire nation. In these scenarios, your support to humanitarian assistance and disaster response efforts through mobilizing assets and the immediate deployment of personnel has saved very many lives. Honoring the Filipino soldiers for their gallantry and dedication, the Commander-in-Chief praised them for keeping the peace, upholding democratic ideals, and defending the country for nearly a century. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. A gang leader at the New Belibid Prison, or NBP, is expected to file a complaint against suspended Bureau of Corrections Chief Director General Gerald Bantag. Dante Amento tells us why. Two gang leaders at the New Belibid Prison disclosed they were stabbed by suspended Bureau Corps Chief Director General Gerald Bantag last February 1, 2022, at his office. Bandang 11:30 po ng tanghali po. Pinatawag po kami lahat ng commander ko, ni Director Gerald Bantag. Dito po mismo sa opisina niya. Ronald said Bantag was so drunk when he was stabbed through a crease, a kind of bladed weapon on his palm. Dating po sa akin, dito, gumaganyan lang ako eh, kasi siyempre, uh, takot na po ko eh. Bigla niya po inawa ko ng amigo. Tapos kinalaan yung ano, sinuso. Meanwhile, Jonathan was also allegedly stabbed on his thigh. But they cannot recall any reason over Bantag's act. Dito sa dibdib, binaon niya punti, hindi ko na nakayanan. Kung inayaan ko yung pagsaksak niya dito, hindi, hindi ko alam. Ngayon, patay na siguro ako. Ang ginawa ko lang, inawakan ko yung patalim, tinapay ko. Sa galit niya, dito niya sinaksak sa hita ko. Nung dito na sa hitay, nayaan ko na lang. After the incident, both of them were allegedly bribed for 50,000 pesos just not to speak. 
Tapos kinumagahan, pinatawa po tayo, di ba pare? Maga-maga po yun. Apo. May binunod si Sulueta na pera. Eh, sobri. May lamang pera. Yun ang po eh, para sa pananahimik na, namin. Yung sa akin man po, 50 din. Kaso lang, ayaw sana namin tanggapin yung 50 dahil yung nangyari nga sa akin, di ko matanggap ba? Baka sabihin nila, porque inmate kami, pira lang abol namin, hangad namin. Kung di namin tanggapin yung 50,000, ang sabi po nila sa amin na pag di nyo tanggapin to, mas lalo kayo mong problema dito. Ronald is willing to file a complaint against Bantag over the incident. They have now the courage to speak when the new administration came in. Bureau of Corrections or Bucor OIC Director General Gregorio Pio Katapang Jr. on the other hand said he is willing to assist the said persons deprived of liberty or PDLs in filing the charges. Wala namang kasalanan mga tao na yan. Nakorso na dahan lang. Eh, hindi naman dapat talaga ganun. So, uh, importante talaga yung human rights kahit mga PDL yan. Eh, may karapatan sila, hindi sila pwedeng saktan. The UNTV News has asked for a reaction from Bantag and his lawyer, but they have no response yet. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Justice Secretary Crispin Boying Remulia has challenged former Bureau of Correction Security Officer Ricardo Zulueta to face his cases and file his counter affidavit. This was Remulia's reaction when Zulueta surfaced last weekend through his ater lawyer, attorney Lauro Gakayan. Based on his post, attorney Gakayan clarified that his client is not in hiding or dead. Zulueta is one of the alleged mastermind charged in the killing of broadcaster Percy Lapid and June Villamor. Well, I'm very glad he's there. No? Kasi ako naman, alam ko naman buhay siya. I, 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 I had no doubt na buhay siya. Uh, eh, sana harapin niya yung mga kaso. Hindi pa siya humaharap, hindi pa siya bumunta sa DOJ. Well, in a message to UNTV News, Attorney Gakayan said they have not received a copy of the complaint and affidavit of the witnesses and other documents in support of the complaint by the DOJ. Zulueta only received the subpoena, hence they cannot respond or file the counter affidavit. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has approved on Friday, December 16, the endorsement of an executive order or EO by the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA Board's Committee on Tariff and Related Matters, extending the temporary modification of the tariff on various products to address supply issues and stabilize inflation. According to NEDA, the EO number 171, which temporarily reduces the tariff rates on meat of swine, corn, rice, and coal until December 31, 2023, aims to mitigate the impact of inflationary pressures caused by the Ukraine-Russia crisis, expand the sources of supply, and decrease the prices of key commodities. NEDA Secretary Arsenio Balisacan told in a statement that the extension of tariff modification on certain products augment the domestic food supplies, diversify sources of food staples, and temper inflationary pressures arising from supply constraints caused by external conflict. The executive order also extends the reduced rates of import duty on meat of swine, fresh, chilled, or frozen at 15% for in quota, 25% for out quota, corn at 5% for in quota, and 15% for out quota, rice at 35% for both in quota and out quota, and coal at zero duty. The Republic Act 10863, also known as the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act, gives the president the power to reduce or remove existing rates of import duty to further help the general welfare and national security and to increase upon the recommendation of NEDA. The government's effort in fighting smuggling in the country resulted to the seizing of hundreds of millions of pesos worth of agricultural products. The Department of Agriculture is already coordinating with the Justice Department for the filing of cases against smugglers. Ray Pelayo will tell us why.
For about two months, the Department of Agriculture or DA and Bureau of Customs or BOC already intercepted about 300,000 kilograms of agricultural product without proper documents. These include onions, pork, sugar, and other products. The DA is now tracking the smugglers and soon be filed with cases in accordance with the Anti-Agricultural Smuggling Act. We are on uh, the lookout uh, for those smugglers. We have not given the chance to know who are those 20 smugglers. We are in the realm of investigating. We are investigating the smugglers. Actually, running total natin is around 500 million pesos worth of agricultural products na, na sisis natin. And at the same time, meron tayong around the uh, five na consignees na napapaila ng kaso under the 10845 o Anti-Agricultural uh, Smuggling uh, Act. The government will no longer import onion as the local producers have started to harvest. Ang ano po kasi dito, kapag ka nag-issue uh, tayo ng uh, import permits and uh, smuggled articles are proliferating in the markets, mahirap pong mag-distinguish ano po ba yung imported dito at alin ang ano. Meanwhile, some individuals were arrested in connection with the illegal selling of hybrid rice in Cagayan. According to Assistant Secretary James Layug, they are now studying the case to be filed against them. Posts went viral on social media of farmers who bought hybrid rice but eventually discovered that these are actually imprinted with not for sale tag and logo of the Department of Agriculture. Una bibili niya doon sa probinsya, uh, uh, i-aggregate niya sa isang probinsya and then dadali nila doon sa ibang probinsya. Then doon nila ibebenta doon sa mga magsasaka na mga uh, nangangailangan ng, uh, ng seed. Ray Pilayo UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Passengers have started to flock to the Nino Aquino International Airport or NAIA almost a week before December 25. The Manila International Airport Authority says measures are in the pipeline to further decongest the airport amid the holiday rush. This report will tell us why. As the Yuletide season approaches, long lines of passengers are now a common sight at the Nino Aquino International Airport or NAIA. Brian Coe, Senior Assistant General Manager of Manila International Airport Authority or MIAA says the airport has been experiencing the peak of passenger influx. In the past 15 days, he says 1.6 million passengers were accommodated in all NAIA terminals with an average of 106,000 passengers per day. But on Sunday, December 18, they recorded 120 26,000 passengers transiting the airport. They expect the influx of passengers to reach up to 130,000 per day in the coming days. In the coming days, especially this week, we expect talaga the peak, or at least the surge to be sustained at that level uh, until Christmas and then after Christmas, magbabalik tag naman yung flow. Ang hibibigat naman na traffic is yung palabas naman ng Manila. Some passengers decided to travel back to their province as early as today. Uh, actually, we're hoping na konti yung tao today kasi Monday, but we didn't expect marami po talaga pa rin pasahero. To allow seamless entry of passengers, the MIAA says they will remove the initial security screenings in all terminals beginning December 21. Last Friday, X-ray machines at the NAIA Terminal 2 were also removed. Passengers are asked to show their tickets for them to enter the terminal. We're aligning with international standards and we have all of the mitigating measures that we have right now, like the CCTV, K9 profilers, so it's not that much in the secure. We've received really good feedback from the passengers and even from the airlines. So, ang ina address na lang yan because of all the people that are coming in freely is talagang yung capability ng mga check in counters na yan to handle all of these passengers simultaneously. Passengers are reminded to arrive hours before their flight and to coordinate with their respective airlines for updated flight status. Meanwhile, Co adds they will have a meeting with the Land Transportation Franchising a Regulatory Board to regulate the so-called white taxis that have been allowed operating within the airport premises to augment their reduced accredited fleet of taxis that will service inbound passengers. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. For a news abroad, 
Ambulance and border staff are taking extensive industrial action along with many unions across England and Wales, including the Royal College of Nursing overpay dispute this coming holiday season. From London, United Kingdom, here's Anna Lima to tell us the details live. LC, about 1,200 military members and 1,000 civil servants are having to be called in temporarily at a short notice to keep services running over Christmas. This is after the National Health Service or NHS staff and Border Force pursue their demands over pay by taking industrial action in England on the 21st and 28th of December. Although unions say military staff are not sufficiently trained to take on ambulance roles, Health Secretary Steve Barclay says his top priority is keeping patients safe. With inflation up at more than 10%, many are struggling to keep up with the living cost. Thus, unions disagree with the previously offered pay increase of 4.75% and claim that it represents an unaffordable real terms pay cut. However, Cabinet Minister Oliver Dowden reiterated that a 19% pay increase for nurses is simply not affordable. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom government has announced that it will bring out a new resilience framework on Monday, December 19, to improve how the UK will respond accordingly to future issues like industrial action. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Anna Lima, reporting live from London, United Kingdom. Russian President Vladimir Putin is preparing a new hypersonic missile that can hit any target on Earth in under 30 minutes. Maven Dog will give us the details. According to Russia's Defense Ministry, the Avangard missile system is installed in an underground launch silo in Orenburg, Russia. This will increase the combat capabilities of the strategic missile forces added by the ministry. Colonel General Sergei Karakayev, commander of Russia's Strategic Missile Forces, said last week that the missile will enter combat duty in the Yasny military formation as part of the Strategic Missile Forces anniversary. The announcement comes after a series of Russian airstrikes on Friday, December 16, which targeted key energy and water facilities across Ukraine and triggered blockouts in several cities. The missile attacks killed at least three people and left several injured. At the latest, electricity supply has been restored. However, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that more work needs to be done across the country's regions. Звичайно, ще дуже багато роботу, щоб стабілізувати систему. Є проблеми з постачанням тепла, є великі проблеми. Meanwhile, Ukraine plans to open around 10,000 invincibility centers or shelters across the country, while Russian attacks are ongoing. Mavian Dog, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Elsie. The Octa Research Group reports the COVID-19 positivity rate in the country further declines amid the holiday season. A recent survey conducted by the Octa Research Group also shows that 9 out of 10 Filipinos approve of the government's COVID-19 response. Janice and Hente will tell us why. Research Group Fellow Professor Guido David said the vaccination drive and health protocols implemented by the government are enough to help limit the spread of COVID-19 virus. Based on the recent report of Octa Research, positivity rate in Metro Manila declined from 14.4% to 13.9%. Ang nakikita natin sa Metro Manila, bumaba yung positivity rate na bumababa na siya from 14.4% to 13.9%. At nagsisimula na rin siyang bumaba in most provinces in the Philippines. 
According to Professor Dabi, despite making face masks optional in indoor and outdoor settings, Filipinos still opt to wear face masks for their own protection against the virus. The government also continues to encourage the public to get vaccinated, which strengthens the country's wall of immunity. Kung baga, natuto na tayo, Henry, how to be responsible for ourselves. Yan yung gusto nating makita at yan din siguro yung pwedeng maging modelo ng mga ibang bansa na kahit optional ay mga kababayan natin alam paano protektahan yung sarili natin. The recent Octa Research Survey also shows that 9 out of 10 Filipinos believe that the government's COVID-19 response is enough. Ibig sabihin, masaya yung mga kababayan natin na uh, somehow manage na natin yung COVID, hindi na tayo nagla-lockdown, uh, maraming bakunado, maraming nabakunahan ng mga kababayan natin, andyan yung vaccines available. Professor David also hopes that COVID-19 cases and positivity rate will continue to decline until next year. Janice Inhante, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB issued special permits to buses to augment the need this holiday season. Some provincial trips at the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange are now fully booked. JP Nunez will tell us why. Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange or PITX has announced that there are bus trips that are already fully booked in their terminal even before the holiday season. Jason Salvador, PITX head of Corporate Affairs, said most of them are bus trips going to Bicol region. PITX advises passengers to check the availability of the buses to their area of destination from the bus companies. He also emphasized the need to have early booking to ensure that they will get their ride when they arrive at the terminal, especially those who will bring a number of luggages. Medyo mahirap na talaga siya, no? although we, we assure them that if you go to PITX, makakanap naman sila ng sasakyan dito. Kaya lang, katulad din ng mga pagbibili natin, no? it case talaga na mag-book at bumili ng ticket ng maaga. Kasi nga naman, pag late ka na, eh medyo may kasigi pa na at pagpupuno na. The Department of Transportation said the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB issued around 700 special permits to bus companies to augment the need for holiday season. So more or less, nasa almost 700 bus units yung binigyan ng uh, special permits, uh, karagdagan pa dun sa mga tumatakbo sa kanilang ruta upang ma-augment natin yung mga pumapasada, yung mabiyahe papuntang probinsya. Meanwhile, other passengers took the opportunity to travel to their provinces to spend vacation this holiday season earlier today. Some of them filed their leave from work earlier to avoid the crowd in the terminal before December 25. Kasi hindi masyadong maraming tao. Hindi siksikan. Mahirap pag siksikan. Ano, syempre, ngayon fix season tsaka wala nang... Medyo ano na, maluwag na yung biyahe, kaya yung iba niya maraming uuwi ng probinsya. So mas pinili ko ngayon kasi konti pa lang masyado yung pasahero, hindi pa sobrang dami. Lalo na kung marami kang dalang bagahe, ang hirap, makipagsiksikan. Uh, one week before, nag na ako para, alam, para makakuha ng maagang tiket. Kasi maraming ano eh, mahirap sumakay para mas maaga. PITX management said they expect that passengers in the terminal may still reach up to 175,000 before December 25. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, announced that a magnitude 5.3 earthquake struck Abra province on Monday, December 19, and shook several parts of Luzon. The tectonic wake struck 5 kilometers northeast of Budine town around 5.06 p.m. at a depth of 45 kilometers and could spawn aftershocks and damage. According to FIVOX, the tremor was felt at a moderately strong intensity 4 in Banayoyo, Ilocosur, and felt like the passing of a heavy truck that may rattle doors and windows. Meanwhile, the intensity 3, which can cause hanging objects to swing moderately and some people to feel dizzy, was recorded in Banged Abra. Intensity 2 was felt in Baguio City, Benguet, Sinait, Ilocosur, and Santiago City, Isabela, 
and Intensity 1 in Peña Blanca, Gonzaga, Cagayan, Lawag City, Nueva Era, Pasukin, Ilocos Norte, and Tagudin, Ilocos Sur. In October, a 6.4 magnitude quake hit Abra. This was barely three months after a magnitude 7 tremor struck the province and other nearby provinces in Luzon, including Metro Manila. And in other news, the Senate is set to discuss the proposed Maharlika Investment Fund Bill when session resumes in January. Experts, meanwhile, continue to raise concern over the proposed bill. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. There are still provisions under the amended House Bill number 6608 or the Maharlika Investment Fund Bill that needs to be expounded on. Economist Michael Batu said the tenure of the Board of Directors should also be included in the bill. Ang hindi malinaw dito sa version ito ng batas is yung kanilang tenure. So halimbawa, gano'n ba sila katagal sa pwesto na to? Mag How long is their tenure? Anim na taon ba to? Tatlong taon ba to? According to Bato, there is no need to wait for the implementing rules and regulations before setting the tenure for the members heading the Maharlika Fund. He also reiterated that the process should also be cleared, especially when the member decides to resign. Other provisions that should be clarified include the reporting of the MIF investment. Uh, is the Maharlika Investment Corporation willing to disclose uh, kung saan mga companies nila in-invest yung pera ng bayan? Diba? Kailangan malaman natin yun kasi ano yan eh, uh, para ma mawala yung agam-agam ng ating mga kababayan kala kung saan dinala yung hard-earned money ng paano mga Pilipino. The said reporting would also help in monitoring fraudulent investments. Meanwhile, Greco Belgica, the former chairperson of the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, said that the fund for the MIF should be invested in small medium enterprises in the Philippines. If government really wants to help the poor Filipinos and strengthen the economy, then we have to strengthen SMEs um, because businesses create jobs. Eh. Mm -hmm. You know, the issue is that and uh, strengthen the ag agricultural sector. The proposed Maharlika Investment Fund bill has been approved on the third and final reading in the lower house and is set to be deliberated in the Senate in January. Eileen Cerudo, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A tax code revision for Japan has been agreed by Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and his cabinet, with investments being made to purchase a military assets as the nation prepares for conflict. Charis Longbowen details why, live. Charis? Good evening, LC. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's new capitalism agenda to redistribute income, Japan's household assets worth up to 2 quadrillion yen will be put into investment. The tax chief for the Liberal Democratic Party or LDP announced that the, top, the topic of taxes are different this year compared to a normal year, with the LDP planning to increase income taxes by 1 trillion yen to bolster defense outlay to 2% of gross domestic domestic products or GDP. Corporate will have a surtax of 4 to 4.5 percent, while smaller firms will have a reduction of 5 million yen. Reconstruction income tax will be reduced to 1 percent and tax for tobacco will be set to 3 yen per cigarette. Last Friday, Japan announced a turning point in history as they revealed their financial plans amounting to $320 billion. As they prepare for conflict, they are ready to purchase missiles with the potential to attack neighboring countries, China and North Korea. Meanwhile, taxes for the upcoming fiscal year will increase at the next fiscal year, gradually increasing each year until 2027, Tax Chief Miyazawa says. However, LC, the public are not happy as almost 65% of Kyodo's residents oppose raising taxes for military expansion. 87% say that Kishida's plan to ensure the country's security is not sufficient. Back to you, LC. Thank you, Cheriz Longbowen, reporting live from Japan. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening.
Marcus ang bahay. As the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. we will leave you with a word giving glory to God from the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 it says be not wise in thine own eyes fear the Lord and depart from evil the reasons behind the news December 19, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harden Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.